Welcome back to the channel. My name is Coach Ben. Today's rant is something that I've kind of been thinking about because it was on social media a few weeks ago back when the MLS was playing and they were in their playoffs. Um, but it was this video that's right here. Obviously, there's no audio or anything because I don't want to get it taken down or anything like that. But this video is uh, Thierry Henry, who's the coach of the Montreal Impact, is mic'd up. And I wanted to discuss my thoughts and reactions to the feedback and the criticism that he was receiving. Today's rant is, like I said in the intro, about the Thierry Henry mic'd up video of him coaching. Now, I'm ranting from the, the perspective of a coach, a fellow coach, and the reaction and the criticism that has been going around on social media about this particular video. And my first point, and I think what really frustrates me so much is, for the most part, everyone that I've seen is criticizing Thierry Henry for telling his players, hey, why don't you turn? Hey, can you do it faster? Hey, can you play two touch? Hey, can you play one touch? Those are things as a coach you say throughout an entire game. And here's the thing. Yes, you expect at the professional level that they should be able to do that. But what most people in the world, if they're not actually in coaching, don't understand is it can be looked at in two ways. From a non-coach perspective, it can look at as Thierry Henry is coaching the player, telling him exactly what to do. From a coaching perspective, it can be taken as he's sending cues to his players to make them think a certain way and to make them reevaluate their game mid-game so he doesn't have to coach. That's my problem with this is because everyone who's criticizing this video are probably not coaches. And everyone thinks that they would never make those same mistakes. They would never do that in a game or how come professionals can't play one or two touch. That's the truth. And I think it, it comes to light because there's no fans and there's no noise distracting that. Now, if you look at any of the professionals, right, Guardiola, Klopp, Jose Mourinho, Frank Lampard, they are all coaching their players from the sideline, telling them cues, giving them signals, telling them something that they need them to try in the next time they get the ball. Maybe look to switch the ball because so-and-so is always open or, you know, like giving them tits and bits of coaching during the game. During a normal season, you would never hear that because obviously you're going to have fans and the coach is probably not going to be mic'd up. But I think the, the amount of criticism that he's receiving because he's coaching his players and telling them to pass one, two, or why don't you pass one, two, is because just like in college, when you get to that professional level, there's a certain expectation that players need to meet. And it doesn't do you any good as a coach to to criticize and to tear down a player for not playing one ball, one, uh, one or two touch ball, as opposed to saying, why don't you play one, two? You can play one, two. Let's play faster. Let's move the ball quicker. Those are words of encouragement to get the players to start thinking, I need to pick my game up. I need to step it up. I need to play one or two. I need to go faster and faster and faster. There's difference between that and someone literally saying, pass the ball, shoot the ball, cross the ball, dribble, tackle, joystick coaching. That's, I think that's my biggest problem with social media is that everyone is quick to judge because they're not in their shoes. It's so easy to say, I'm a better coach than this person because I would never do that. But you're not in the heat of the moment. You're not in the heat of the game. You're not, your job is not on the line. You're not trying to make playoffs. You're not trying to do X, Y, and Z. You're at home on your couch looking through Instagram, criticizing someone who has been the top of his game and everything that he's done. Arguably one of the best players in the world. He knows what it takes to get to that level. So by him saying that, I think it's more, he's trying to get his players' mindsets to switch mid-game by saying, I know you can play one or two. I know you can go faster. I think it, it just comes down to what side of the, the, the line you're on. If you're a player, you'd probably understand that because when you hear a coach tell you something like, pick it up, play faster, something like that, you're, you should think of those as cues to, 
you need to pick the game up. You need to start playing faster. It's not necessarily to tear you down as a player saying you're too slow, you're holding onto the ball, but you just need to be quicker. You need to move the game faster. And being on the coaching side of it, yes, I've done those exact same things that he's saying, but I'm not mic'd up. That's the difference. You guys are hearing this thinking that why should he tell a professional to do that? But it happens at every level and every team and around the world. Pep Guardiola, for an example. Whenever he's on the sideline, he's doing like this, like this, 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 this. He's telling someone on that field that they need to move the ball quicker. They need to find space. They need to work with each other. Those are coaching cues. Now, it may be Pep Guardiola's style to be very animated and maybe those players understand when he's doing this and they get that. But maybe for Thierry Henry, he knows that by telling his player, you need to go one, two, why didn't you play the one, two ball? Why don't you turn, turn quicker? You know, giving those kind of cues, that's maybe the reason, maybe he connects with his players that way. So for every coach and for every player, the relationship is going to be very different. And it frustrates me so much because I read these comments of these kids who are just commenting, oh, my coach would never have to tell me to play one or two balls, or I can take more than two, or I don't need to take more than two touches. I'm a better coach than he would be, or he's a shit coach. Like, come on, you haven't made it to the peak of your career. You're not at the very top. I wouldn't criticize Thierry Henry coaching because in the heat of the moment when you're in a game and you need to win and your player is not doing what is supposed to do or you need him to do it better, you're going to say things like that. It was unfortunate that he's probably mic'd up because now it comes off as MLS players don't know how to coach or how or MLS players don't know how to play. But the reality is that every coach in the world does that. You just don't hear it. That's the reality. Unless you're at the game and you can hear the coach screaming or shouting, which they should probably never scream or shout. But unless you physically hear it there at a game, you're not going to hear it obviously through the TV because there's stadiums, there's fans, there's noise, there's commentators. So you don't see them. You just see the animation of whatever they do. I think it's great as a coach myself to see and hear Thierry Henry coaching like that because you realize even at the top, 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 the MLS is obviously the best in the U.S. That's the top. But to see the kind of coaching that is required at the top level and just the little things that he says or, or does or his body language or the words that he says, it really makes you understand that even at the top level, it's still the same as at high school, code, college, and element youth and all those things. They're all the same. It doesn't really change. It's just your expectations become greater. Here's a suggestion for you guys. If you're on Instagram and you, you're about to criticize someone for something and it's not your own profession, I would reevaluate your comment. And I would reevaluate what's the perspective that you have. If you're a coach and you're criticizing saying that I would never do that as a coach, that's your own coaching style. But for someone like myself seeing Thierry Henry, I think it's 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 understandable because I myself have been in that situation. I myself have said those exact words, um, but I'm not at that highest level. And again, I think you just need to think about that at the highest level, it's still the same sport. It's just faster. It's just more competitive. It's just a <clears throat> overall more intense version that you've been playing for probably your whole life. So I will end this rant by saying I'm sick of people criticizing coaches and even players for that matter when they're not there themselves. Okay, I will never ever say that I would never do something that a professional athlete does. Do you know why? Because I'm not a professional athlete. I haven't made it there. And there's a reason why I didn't make it there. Maybe my speed of play wasn't good enough. Maybe my, my touch wasn't good enough. Maybe my overall ability wasn't good enough. And that's the same thing for the coach. I will never criticize another coach at a higher level than me because they've done something right to get to that point. I may not agree with them, but I'll never criticize them by telling them that they're a bad coach, that they're wrong in doing because I don't think there's a bad way of doing something. There may not be a, it may not be efficient and it may not be the best methodology or the best moment or the best teaching principle at the time, but everything is correct at the appropriate moment. Okay. Kickball is appropriate in certain, certain situations, 
but to teach kickball all the time, I would disagree and say that that's not the right principle that you need to be teaching for an entire game. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. I'm just, I wouldn't agree with you in that sense. But as a coach yourself, you have your own reasoning as to why you're doing this and this. Okay. Um, so that's it. I hope you guys, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the rant. I, um, it's frustrating sometimes to read comments and, and, and threads on and social media criticizing people. Um, because I think it's very toxic and I think it makes yourself become toxic and I think it makes yourself become very pessimistic. So I always try to be encouraging. I always try to uplift people. I, if I, what's the, what's the saying? If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. I feel like in 2020, man, right now, I think that we should just use that as a motto and say that if you don't have anything nice to say, just shut up. <laughs> That's it. That's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I've uh, been wanting to make this for a while, actually, because th that video went around for a long time. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. If you share the same sentiments and you sh share the same thoughts, leave a comment below. I'd love to have a discussion with you. Um, in my offer for all coaches, if you need any help, advice on anything coaching related, send me an email. My email is in the description. If you're a player, send me your CV, send me your highlight video. I'd love to help you out and give you any kind of pointers that I can. Last but not least, a little bit of self-promotion here. If you are a athlete in the Southern OC area and you want to train with me, my links are in the description. You can send me an email, hit me up on Instagram, or check out my Coach Up profile. You can find all the information you need to schedule a profile. I do individuals and groups. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.